2019. It's actually the first day of Guy Fawkes Day. I didn't realise this. I thought it was just got bonfire night, Guy Fawkes night, to commemorate and remember the uh, treasonous gunpowder plot. And I'm going to give a brief history on November the 5th and some thoughts. But this talk is really about to remember the Lord Jesus Christ, his, his finished work on the cross, spilling of his precious holy blood to save all sinful mankind, because we're all sinners, we're all wretched, reprobate. And without the blessed Lord, we are lost. And uh, his mercy and love is outstretched continually while the earth is crooked, perverse world and all nations remain in sin and ignorant of the truth, the knowledge of the Word of God. And so I'll give you some thoughts on that. English history, the preservation of the Holy Word and the importance and significance all tied into the meaning of uh, November the 5th and the machinations against nationalism and the Word of God undermining the authority of the Holy Scriptures, which is a continual battle of the devil and through the hands of uh, certain bodies and groups is a uh, constant, it's um, repeated throughout history. And if you have that knowledge, you are able to see that when you study history to see what it's really about. It's really about the truth. The mercy of God. I'm going to read the psalm. Uh, psalm 15, just a few verses. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens, which we have, we have done whatsoever he pleased. Whatsoever he have pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes they have, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they heart. Handle not. Feet they have. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak, they through their throat. But they, they that make them are likened unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. I was a trust in the Lord, he is a help and a shield. A house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, he is a help and a shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, he is a help and a shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us, he will bless us, he will bless the house of Israel, he will bless the house of Aaron, he will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. We are blessed with the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into sin. But we will bless the Lord from the, this time forth. So, I'm going to keep this in remembrance, really, of the Lord, and not just the significance of uh, November the 5th. Um, it's important, but it's not imp as important as the Word of God and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's read um, John 1. The Lord is the Creator and the Father through His Son, through His Word, Jesus Christ, created all things. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So God is eternal, the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal, the second member of the Godhead. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and dark, darkness comprehended it not. So we see the Lord and his word, his son, is the creator of all things. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That 
was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world was made by him. He came unto his own, and his own received the Lord. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Uh, John 3, he must be born again, he must be born of God's spirit, by, by soul, grace and merit, spilling of God's blood, his resurrection from the cross, back onto eternal life. To be born again in the spirit is to simply repent, to believe, to, to change your mind, to look to the salvation and hope and outstretch mercy of Jesus Christ and believe for your heart. To be born again for the Lord to appropriate his atonement, to, to um, ingratiate his power, to give you his, uh, what he'd done that no man could do for themselves, that they may be saved, they may be born again of his righteousness, because the man is flesh and corrupt and wicked from the beginning. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me, preferred before me, for he was before me. And of this um, fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Uh, Colossians 2 The Lord come in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and all the believers are complete by his fullness, by his grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law of Moses, he didn't end it, he completed it, he fulfilled it, and gave us the new everlasting covenant, the new testament of his blood, of his life, giving up his, his, his physical life, and taking it up again, because he's holy, and God, and eternal. And he is the life, and the light of the world. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then, art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Today it's to repent towards God, to look and seek, the salvation and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I wanted to give a, a remembrance of Jesus Christ as the saints, the believers in Christ are reminded to gather together often to remember the Lord's uh, empty cross, his victory, that he's, he's granted all repentant believers, all those who've believed, born of his spirit by his soul grace, his goodness, his long suffering, his mercy, his outstretched mercy to save all sinners. So I wanted to give um, a brief uh, summary of the gospel and a brief um, brief bit about history, what I what I can remember, and what I've gleaned before the oh, the coming forth of the uh, King James Bible which preceded the um, civil war, the English Civil War. So, uh, looking at the, reading between the lines of the machinations of the, um, the powers against uh, national sovereignty, the will of God in man, and then to consider the free agency of man and the corruption and how that all entangles and Evil tries to overthrow good, and today evil is prominent. It's uh, the church is a prostate in, in capital A sense. Since the times of Oliver Cromwell, since the times of King James I, preceding Oliver Cromwell, 
It's just got on worse. It's been since the 70s. I've noticed all the European powers undermined undermined our nationality, undermined our our, our God-given rights, uh, and watered it down, milked it, just completely saturated it with Euro Europeanisation and all the corruption that comes with it, homosexuality, gay marriage, abortion rights, all the things that undermine the morals that are taught in the Word of God. To, it's all about undermining the faithfulness and the truth in the Word of God preserved by King James. I've been studying uh, the works of Rabbi Marvin S. Antelman. Marvin S. Antelman. And he, he's passed away now, I believe, but in the 70s he wrote uh, basically what Christian scholars and researchers have revealed over the, over the ages. And that's the machinations of the Catholic Church, the Jesuits, and the apostates, even apostate Jesuits, to, to the Roman Catholicism, found in the Illuminati, which ties into Freemasonry and all the uh, affiliations and associations that these uh, canker, that these infect, to undermine these uh, these rights. And um, Mr. Antelman, uh, Marvin Antelman, wrote two books, Eliminate the Opiate. Uh, one you can download free in the PDF form at the moment. And there's a second volume which goes into more detail of the history of the uh, Illuminati and all its uh, the forming of socialism, all, all the things that undermine um, the rights of uh, individual freedoms and, and God's laws given to man and to destroy morality. Um, it's, it covers the forming of atheism. It's all been done by Christian researchers as well, but it's from a, a Jewish perspective and it's how, how he reveals that the same powers, the Jesuit, associations and the Illuminati and Freemasonry and all the apostate Jews, the Kabbalists and all the different sects it formed up was simply to destroy the authority of the Word of God contained in the Old Testament, the Torah, which the Jewish people hold to, in which Christian, Christians hold to and believe it's the, the authoritative Word of God which we, we have in the King James authorised version, authorised because it's lawfully authorised and it's ordained of God to be lawfully authorised and God does things lawfully if you read, you study the scriptures um, things were done lawfully always done lawfully because God is, the, God is the law, the ultimate law and he gave the law to Moses which the Jews hold to and he's revealing all the sects and machinations that um, undermine Judaism, the or, or the main um, the main holding the main belief of the authoritative word of the Torah, which has been undermined by the uh, Kabbalists and the apostate Jews, and, and given the history of how those seeds were planted to undermine uh, the water it down and overturn it. And it's the same machinations that's overturned our nation and Christianity. And this roots to the uh, powers in, in, of the devil, which are the Illuminati, the Freemasons, and the Catholics, and the Jesuits. And you can see this throughout history. I'm studying Oliver Cromwell today in the Civil War, and, and what he was up against. And, and, and even in, he was a... Um, apostate in the sense that he, he held to Calvinism and but he, he did try to in his compromise he 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 done things lawfully and he was um, pro protecting religious freedoms, religious rights and national rights and he tried to do things lawfully to the best of his understanding. Although he's human and he has fault but uh, um, but reading between the lines, he, he was sincere and he'd he done what needed to be done. And he'd done things lawfully. But he he was up a, he was thrown into that position. He was born into a position of um, 
position of being associated to Parliament and that world. So he was born into a position, and that that seems to be his calling to kick out these corrupt powers. It's all about the corruption in Parliament, in the House of Lords, and the undermining of those influences that infiltrate those hearts and minds of those people. And so he had a battle. Um, he was the, after King Charles I was kicked out, and then later on King Charles II tried to reinstate Roman Catholicism, which is history repeating itself. And then they dug him up, um, apparently his corpse was left to fester and go rotten, so apparently it's believed that his coffee, coffin in, I think it's Westminster Abbey, is empty, because his body was so, so poorly uh, looked after when he died. And King Charles II uh, dug up a body, whether it was uh, Oliver Cromwell's or not, is another matter but dug up his, his body and stuck his head on a spike. It just shows the, the pettiness and vengefulness of this uh, heretical religion and what, what the Catholic Church holds to, that it's a supreme ruler over heaven and earth in Christ's dead. It's, it's actually antichrist. But the world and nation is so perverse and apathetic today, it's lost sight of the meaning of um, November the 5th, so hopefully I can inject some significance and true meaning into what this is all about. It's not just about Catholicism and Protestant, I'm neither a Catholic or a Protestant, I'm simply a Bible-believing son of God, by the merit and grace of my Lord and God and my Saviour, my Heavenly Father, sending His Son, His Word, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins to save my wretched life, my wretched self, sinful, corrupt inheritance from hell and death. So he tasted the physical death and he tasted all, all the sins of mankind, my sins, the whole world's sins. And being holy, he, he's the only one who could redeem me by his precious blood, his holy blood, which I've received gratefully from him personally. And uh, so I'm redeemed and, and live by faith daily in that redemption I received when I first called upon God, believing with all my heart in my Saviour. I wasn't looking for the Lord. I was, I was deeply going the wrong way. And uh, the Lord, thank God, the Lord turned my heart to his son and drew me unto himself. How that happened, I don't know but it was by his grace, by his love, by his foreknowledge that he, uh, I heard the word of God preach in a roundabout way, in an apostate way, but the Lord took, took control and brought me to the cross at Calvary, to my cross, to his cross. And I called upon him and he saved me. He answered me that day faithfully. So that's my invitation. And to put a bit of love, a bit of salt back into the meaning of November 5th. I think I'll entitle this uh, talk for video. Now whether the weather will hold out, I'll have a bonfire later and I'll film it and then I'll put this talk over the top. Uh, but whether the weather will hold out this evening, God willing it will. And uh, I'll see to it that I'll, I'll have a bonfire in remembrance of this this treasonous plot against our nation, against our parliament, against our, our sovereign, that God appoints, whether we like it or not, uh, God appoints these people. We are wicked, you know, we're, we're fallen flesh, and we need the grace of God, and things don't go the way that we think they should go. But, uh, rebellion is never the answer. Going against the law, even though the laws are corrupt, rebelling against them is never the answer. But <coughs> Oliver Cromwell got uh, lawful permission from Parliament to raise an army. He'd done everything by the book. And you'll get all the critics in history slagging him off. Oh, he's a hypocrite, he was this, he was that. But they weren't in his shoes. No one was in that man's shoes to really judge what was in his heart. Uh, history speaks for itself. What he done is he protected our rights and freedoms. That's the King James. 
and what was King James made it as a womanizer, as was Oliver Cromwell. There was always that voice looking for dirt, the fray, and these people who have to compromise themselves at times. They're weak, they're human. Oliver Cromwell smoked. You know, whatever, whatever fault that could be found is found. And it's raised by the same voice, the people who murder and kill. And then they, they raise petty comments, straining at, uh, straining at gnats, you know, splitting airs. Uh, but they're the biggest hypocrites going, these voices. And today these voices are promoted by the media. You know, always going against that which is for the right. And then promoting everything and holding it, everything up, giving it a platform for all that's wrong and against it. The powers are, are manifest and they're clear, they can clearly be seen today. And this is history repeating it in itself. Mary the, Fir um, Mary the First attempted to reinstate the Roman Catholic powers to dominate. See, the, these powers don't come out in the open and show their face and hands. They have to do it through influencing their members. The power, the power and hold it has, and in the layers and layers of indirect associations to these powers, you don't see the face of it when it appears. You only see the spirit of it. By their fruits you shall know them. And you can discern the simplicity of that which is against the truth by just knowing the word of God, having the spirit of truth and applying yourself to study these things, to be able to see it. But first you need to know the love of God. You need to have received the Holy Spirit and be born of God, born of the Spirit. Otherwise these things are intellectualized. You're, you're, you're split down one, one side or the other. You're not allowed to sit on the fence because you're accused of being the devil. But you can stand. Christ puts you on the rock where you can see the truth and it's a two-edged sword, the word of God's like a two-edged sword and it divides this asunder so you can see through the eyes and the understanding and light of God which is freely given to the repentant believer. Mary I again attempted to reinstate Roman Catholicism. The antithesis was Elizabeth I. She tried to uh, reinstate, um, re-inject or reform Protestantism, 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 which is really the church of King Henry VIII. So you had this split in religion. That split is, remains there today. The, it's like the left and right hand of the devil clapping together like a seal and slapping the truth in the, in the middle. Um, so King Henry was an apostate believer. He, he just he just rebelled because he wanted a divorce. So that's that's the root of uh, Protestantism. Protestantism. So um, that's not biblically correct either. So the Church of England aren't biblically correct. They're apostate because they root in uh, the Church of Henry VIII. Because that's what it is. And even he commissioned the Bible, and that was authorised by himself in 1538. But it was criticised because it contained inconsistencies. And then there was a bishop's Bible in 1568, uh, and that was more common amongst the ruling clergy, the, cler the clergy class. But Queen Elizabeth I didn't authorise it, she was opposed against it. And the most popular Bible of the time is the Geneva Bible, published in 1576, but it was translated in 1557, made in Geneva by exiled Protestants, persecuted by Mary I. So they have this back and forth of Catholics uh, persecuting Protestants and then bad Protestants persecuting Catholics. So you never you got this dialect of one and fighting the other, and that does no good for the truth. That does no good for the word. That does no good for the, uh, the body of Christ. Neither of these bodies represent the body of Christ truly. Only in part. Only in the parts that they want to. I wrote to um, my local councillors, just inviting them, 
graciously, kindly asking them would they, you know, consider putting the meaning back into firework night. And I got all the abuse under the sun, threatened to be smacked in the mouth, called a called a moron, all sorts of things. I called the person out, sent a carbon copy of his rhetoric to all his colleagues. Never heard a word from him since. I got this um, visit from one UKIP uh, counsellor and I let him let him in the door. You know, he come as a friend, as a brother, and then I discover he's an orange man. And I said, well, I, I don't agree with the orange order. I think it's uh, another apostate uh, Masonic arm. It's just it, it's just controlled by the same devil to smack one arm against the other. So I didn't agree with him. He let me indirectly know he was an ex-member of the SAS, and now he's a charitable worker for creating old people's care homes. And I wondered after he left, in hindsight, well, was that an indirect threat against the vulnerability of myself and my father? Oh, you know, if you ever need me, get you know, call me and I'll help you get your old man in a in a care home kind of thing. And the indirect suggestion that you know he's, he was a, an ex assassin or a member of the SAF. And I wondered, was that an indirect threat, or was he being genuine, or was he just on the the devil behind it? I wondered, you know, but I don't trust the flesh. I don't trust the world, you know, nothing's new under the sun. So we've had this back and forth, all opposing the word of God. So there was um, an appeal by um, oh, the people of concern, Puritans, and people in a, in a conference wanted to request that the Bible be revised. And this has been going on for a long time before the King James Bible and why, um, William Tyndale or, or Wycliffe. And um, an appeal was made to have the an authorised version brought forward, authorised lawfully and authorised by God. Because all the other, it was well commonly known that all the Bibles were corrupt with inconsistencies. And so um, they were not in line with the original truth contained in the, the Gospels of the Word of God. So um, in steps James I after the martyrdom an appeal, <coughs> excuse me, the appeal for him to believe and uh, I think that had a great effect on his heart and a change of mind and in June the 30th 1604 approved the list of 54 revisers but record, records show apparently that 47 scholars were actually participated and uh, King James organised those uh, 47 scholars into six companies, two each working at Westminster, Oxford and Cambridge, on assigned sections to, to each of them, uh, overseen by Richard Bancroft, the Archbishop of Cam Canterbury, oversaw the translation. It was finished and published in 1611 and it took seven years to complete the work. So it is lawfully done by a diverse group of scholars with the sole intention for it to be non-partisan and to these individuals to come with a lawful translation, a faithful translation of the original text lawfully. Now you'll get its critics and you'll get all the intellectual argument against it. You'll get the whole machinations of the devil working through the flesh crying out against it. it it is faithful and it remains faithful and God prophesied of the faithfulness of his, his Bible and um, the prophet Isaiah says men are as grass and they wither but the word of God stands forever because God is true and consistent and unwavering and faithful as his word is and the preservation of the word in the King James Bible and that's the same powers against the word in history are a 
against it today. Uh, but it's worse today, we're even more perverse, we're even more corrupt as a nation. And we're in bed with the European powers on the board. We are one of the harlots. And no one seems to be uh, standing for the truth. Psalm 12, help Lord for the ox, the godly man seeks it, for the faithful fowl from among the children of man. And I, I, I believe that that's never more relevant by the hour, by the minute. It becomes more and more relevant each moment. Uh, Micah 7, I'll read that in a sec. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbour, the fluttering lips and the double heart of his feet. The Lord shall cut off all flattery, fluttering lips and the tongue that speak, speak of proud things. Who has said, with our tongue we will prevail, our lips are our own, who is all over us? The oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy, now will I rise, will I arise, saith the Lord, I will set him in safety from him that loves at him. The words of the Lord are pure words. A silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times, seven years to translate, and seven editions of the translation preceded it, purified, washed, stone washed, washed in blood, washed in martyrs, brought forth the seventh, from the seventh, purified seven times, took seven years to translate and be lawfully published. 1611, we have the faithful word of God. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. So there we have it, the Lord the faithful foresaw and foreknew all these things. And he's out, he's, he's, mer he's understanding, he, he, he knows what's in men's hearts. He didn't need anyone to tell him what was in men's hearts. Because he was holy and he knew that all mankind was corrupt, sinful from the beginning. Like Israel, um, like he told Moses, he said that his people would go after strange gods and be scattered throughout the four corners of the world. And that is, that is, that is in fulfilment. And the Lord only just started to gather back people. Uh, people are gathering back to Israel because it's their homeland, because they've been persecuted for generations. And uh, he will faithfully restore the nation in the time of uh, Jacob's trouble where he will collect his wrath for their going after strange gods, getting in bed with the world and he will separate his righteous seed from the wicked and he will judge all against the faithful and Israel will prevail because God's hand will be on them. But God is saving people of um, his, uh, his people today. Um, many people have come to know their Messiah, many Jews have come to know their, their Lord. But the um, Jewish body is against rejecting Christ and it has this, uh, doesn't understand the triunity of God, the nature of the Lord in Jesus Christ. Uh, there is only one Lord and one God. And God is faithful to his word, but Israel doesn't see that, it rejects it out of hand. And so it doesn't see eye to eye with the Christian body. And in the Lord said they are enemies to the church because of their unbelief. But there's still many perverse, um, still many faithful people to Judaism in a sense, as, as I was revealed in that um, Marvin Antelman, he, he revealed the, there is a faithful, True in the sense to Judaism and, and the, the uh, authority of the Word of God, which has been undermined by the setting up of all this. Like in Christianity, you've got all these different branches of uh, labels put on conservative. Um, like the Jews, so the, the true to the heart and soul of the Torah, the law. They're called uh, Orthodox Jews, but even among the Orthodox, they've become corrupted. You've got Conservative Jews, and then you've got um, Reformist Jews. You've got all these different branches, and these traces of history to the machinations of all these different movements and how they set up bodies. 
to up associations to cause division. It's the same uh, devil casting the tear seeds on uh, in, in the farmer's field, in the husbandman's field, sowing these divisive lies that take root in the hearts of people. So they're hard to trace. You can't see directly the association to where it's coming from, whether that's the Jesuits, the Illuminati, the Freemasons. They all want to overthrow um, religion or the freedom of it, of conscience and the, the just law and the word of God. This is what it's all about. I was reading a psalm at the beginning of the perverse generation, how the world thinks, well, where is God then? We can we can prevail with our lips. We can prevail because God doesn't see anything. Well, God sees all things, but God is mercifully outstretched. Otherwise, He would just kill these people on the spot. But God is merciful, and He allows free agency for man, mankind to choose to choose what uh, what it will do, what it will believe in and that, that, that it may have a probation to repent. And because the world is in unbelief, that God is just to allow these wicked things to happen because we have a wicked nation, we have wicked people. Unbelieving, wicked simply means unbelieving. So we, that's, the Lord judges all things by men's choices. So we have nothing, the world has nothing to complain about. And it goes, it just follows suit. It's in the moulding of the same lump. Whether it's on the left hand or the right hand, it's of the flesh. It's not of the spirit. It's not of God. It's not of Christ. It's of the world. And this, these things don't surprise the Christian, but they may surprise the world. Uh, Psalm 115. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? Because wicked will prevail, and it is prevailing. But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. And just like Israel, they went after Moses prophesied. They would go after strange gods, and they would worship images and idols. That's why God never appeared as a person in, in to the seed of Israel when he called from Mount Horeb through the fire. He just spoke his word, and they heard his word. Just like the apostles saw Jesus Christ, the Son of God in the flesh, manifest with the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the fullness of the grace of the Father, and the grace of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of the Son, in the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So we have those two faithful witnesses of the Word of God, and the living embodiment of the Word, who's the uh, angel of the Lord in the flesh, who took up the flesh become man, to die for mankind, to be the saviour, he's a creator and saviour. But the world is in unbelief, that intellectualises what it doesn't receive, it won't come to the light, like a burglar won't go to the police and, and, and admit it's a burglar. Just like these Catholic powers, the Illuminati, they, the Masons, they, won't, they do things in secret, they won't come to the light because they have to reveal the true intent which is deceptive, which is a lie, which is against all rights and freedoms. So all this preceding the Civil War. Uh, so the gunpowder plot, this is what um, Guy Fawkes was about. One, one day in our history of these, these tossing to in and fro in all these corrupt powers, good and evil, and the, the church, the body of Christ in the middle, in the middle between the two, but that's not seen by the world because you're, because of the undermining of Christianity, the divisions of Christianity, and the divisions of Judaism. You have this and um, the anti-Semitism, and then you've got people who take up the people who cause anti-Semitism take up the position of uh, dominating the scene, so they can. Um, do things unlawfully in the name of Judaism and then when it's opposed they can cry anti-Semitic rhetoric at people. Uh, so the whole thing's like cancer, the whole world is like cancer, it's corrupted and it's getting more and more corrupt. But this day in history, Guy Fawkes Day, bonfire night, firework night, 
was a gunpowder plot in 1605. Um, Guy Fawkes was uh, just a common soldier, a uh, zealous Catholic, uh, along with another, I can't remember his name, Thomas someone, along with another group, a band that was led by Robert Gatsby, who um, was a supporter of Robert Devereux's uprising against Protestant England and uh, who's in prison for doing so, for supporting this Robert Devereux. And I think Robert Devereux fought in the, against the Catholics in, in the Civil War. But uh, you have to double check that, I'm not too sure. So this zealous group of Catholics, Roman Catholics, who are opposed to through history, you can clearly see they're opposed to the, the Word of God, they're opposed to everything that's right and the, to undermine the authority of the King James Bible, to undermine the Gospel, to take dominance of what the Gospel is, to undermine the truth. So by these uh, unbelieving blind people, because they, cause they have, like their idols, uh, you know, uh, Roman Catholicism is all stemmed in uh, pa pagan beliefs. It's all rooted in pagan world history idols and worshipping the devils they have eyes that hear not they have eyes that see not and ears that hear not because they're blind they're blinded by their unbelief and so they believe they're fighting a good cause because they're blind they don't know any difference so they kill for their own religion and just like those who oppose it kill, kill back for their own religion which is protestantism so Robert Gatsby now was Robert Gatsby a Jesuit? I don't know. But was he led by a Jesuit? I don't know. But it was um, conjectured upon that he was associated with a Jesuit authority to raise this dark against King James I to blow up Parliament, blow King James up in the process, and then reinstate Roman Catholicism, which is what it's about. So. Uh, Robert Gatsby, this character, no, he was released from prison because um, he was uh, promoting the Spanish invasion of England. Now the, Sp the Spanish and the Irish are faithful Catholics and loyal supporters to Roman Catholicism in the majority because of the Catholic Church has got its hooks in it and it has long embedded itself in their history to dominate the world and bring all into subjection of these powers through through the mass of nations association to the European Union, the United Nations, and all the infiltration of religion. I'm not saying all people in these bodies are loyal Catholic supporters. They're just following the influence of the roots and the heart and the seeds to so take the root in men's hearts. So this conspiracy is of the devil. And it works through the ambiguousness of people's loyalty to what they believe is right. But behind it, hiding behind that, is the, the machinations of the Jesuits and the Illuminati and the likes, and all these secret groups who have the same goal to undermine people's national freedoms and rights. So um, Gatsby was imprisoned. Uh, round about the, before the death of Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, in 1603, uh, he, uh, I think he was possibly in prison, uh, and it seems that his prison sentence wasn't very long because he was the one who conceived the gunpowder plot and arranged this group of soldiers and, and zealous Catholics to start this plot. Now, whether it was a setup and uh, Guy Fawkes was a scapegoat to perhaps gain favour with report somebody who reported the plot, I don't know. But there's a bit more to it than meets the eye, but I haven't got the answer. But it's hidden there in history. So this Gatsby character uh, conceived the gunpowder plot, which was an illegal attempt to overthrow God's law, the law of man, given to man to judge and, and independently 
rule over each na its own nation. Uh, and so the European has Europeanised and milked, watered it down, diluted it. So we're all, we're all pro European, we're all, all to be encouraged to be pro European, pro, pro homosexuality, because all these people are sodomites. So that's what they practice in secret and they worship pagan idols in secret so they want the paganized world hence you got hollywood paganizing harry potter in in indoctrinating the youth with witchcraft i saw this program the other night it was called legend of the witches and i thought oh, i want to watch that because it was a documentary on witchcraft and the pagan infiltration of Christianity <coughs> now it claimed that the the order of the garter was actually it stems from witchcraft and pagan tree which there, there may be some truth in that and the garter is um, a symbol of, witch, of uh, witchcraft um, I don't know about that but that's the claim of this documentary but it showed all the uh, beliefs of uh, witchcraft and cried out against the persecution of witches and the practice of uh, black sabbaths sacrificing animals and they didn't mention sacrificing humans but that's all part of it now this is um, endemic through ancient history even that um, Marvin Antelman has revealed that uh, the Kabbalist practice is the same sort of thing in the Jewish sense. It's a Jewish witchcraft, a magical ritual and ceremonial, all against the heart, mind and will of God. And this causes uh, our own nation to take the Lord's name in vain and it undermines the authority because not of the word of God and the, 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 uh, they're not God-fearing. So they all do things in the name of, in the belief for the the uh, institution of our our rights and our laws by the word of God. It's all rooted into our history, and they, the church, the apostate church, all takes the name of the Lord in vain, and they're all in support, pro-European, pro oh you know liberal, pro-socialist, whatever. They're all against what is right because the forces behind it is the devil. This uh, documentary, Legend of the Witches, reveals uh, the infiltration of religion even back in that history and, and then creeps in all the Luciferian um, symbols and I icons into the church buildings, into the pagan uh, organised state religions where it has corrupted the body of Christ in those associations and this gives back Christianity a bad name this is what uh, many scholars and researchers Christian and Jewish have revealed that the same hands are against both faiths the Christians and the Jews because they both hold to the authority of the word of God although Judaism doesn't agree to the triune nature and that Jesus Christ was the word of the made flesh to be the saviour, although they, it's written throughout the Old Testament prophecies of the Messiah, suffering, you know, twofold advent in suffering for the sins, dying for the sins of the world, and then restoring his kingdom in the in the kingdom of heaven in the time after Jacob's trouble in the millennial reign, the new Jerusalem, which he will bring with him from heaven, which is the promise to, of all prophecy, it's in every prophecy of that, that, that period and that's the hope of the Jewish people for that kingdom but that kingdom came in, in the manifestation of the Son of God the Word of God but he was rejected but he kept faith in his promise his covenant, old covenant promise that he will never forsake Israel and, but he will try them through the refining fire and he, even in the even the Jews are blinded, but God personally blinded them because of their apostasy going after this vain flesh, going after idols. And you can see that in some of the practices of uh, bonfire night. Um, I'll cover that in a second. But um, this, this uh, witchcraft just revealed, Legend of the Witches revealed, trying to legitimise pagan practices on witchcraft. 
and uh, it revealed the the uh, associations and the influence creeping into the Christian church in in pagan history in our history which is um, carries on it, it's still endemic and it's from the Catholic power that's where I believe it all reads from if you get if you look um, now I wanted to see what in, in, in kind of get a feel of how many people really remember uh, bonfire Guy Fawkes Day and this, uh, uh, there's a place in Sussex called Lewes now they commemorate the whole day as a town as a, as a local community and they have six societies generationally steeped in history where they remember commemorate uh, the death of um, I think it was 17 Protestant martyrs uh, 17 Protestant martyrs in the 16th century um, as well as the commemorance of Guy Fawkes Day, the Treasonous Plot so in the celebration, in the commemoration uh, is a whole day they have six societies steeped in history I'm not, I'm not sure going all the way back to the actual plot but, but they've kept that tradition now they don't uh, they, now this is interesting they don't uh, encourage the tourists to take part in this it's all in, in, in a little clip and I wonder, I don't know what they what these societies how they commemorate it but I thought it was interesting that, that at least that they remember they retain the remembrance of the gunpowder plot and the Protestant martyrs but to me it all the sites of the of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ is and um, I know in local uh, counties it's all become a, a more of a worship as a bonfire than the paganism of, of those establishments like the paganism that crept into the Protestant secret societies, the, the Orange Order. You know, it's just another ma Masonic setup to be the antithesis against Catholicism. So the powers that be can slap them together, and divide and conquer. So they create the problem, and then they're there to take up the the after effect to mop up the spoils. And this has been the game. And machinations played out throughout history. Wars are started, fermented to take root. Then, then the people who, who plant those seeds are in the background. Now, hit, now, um, studying history, you see that the, the feminist movement was one of these seeds to start to set man against woman equal rights. And then, then that game the card was played. And then in the um, the uh, French Revolution, the atheism was another uh, um, thing that was sponsored. To un it's all to undermine the word of God. So all these seeds can be traced. Darwinism. It's all to divide and keep people in ignorance, in bondage to the lie, the lie that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. That God is not eternal. God is not the sovereign ruler of heaven and earth. That, that it's okay to justify killing in the name of their own religion because God, they believe that God doesn't see it because they get away with it so long history repeats itself because they don't, they fail to understand that God is mercifully outstretched he didn't come to destroy sinners he came to save so he allows his probation, his choices to unfold so I only wonder how our nation is heading. Is it going to be into another civil war? And I can see, looking at these, um, how different counties remember Guy Fawkes Day or Bonfire Night, that it, again it seems to be more about their societies and their little um, pagan commemoration and the bonfire. Um, it, it's lost its significance from the beginning just like the church of jesus christ the body of christ and the gospels lost its significance in the heart and then it just ferments the enemies to the cross the enemies to the simplicity 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth and his outstretched mercy to save all sinners. Um, now originally it was um, commemorate, to be commemorated in church meetings, uh, but that was turned on its head, that was overthrown later on by the, the Catholic opposition, you see, because every, every good that's done, like the Civil War, like King James bringing out the, um, bringing forth the translation of the Bible, as soon as it come out it's under attack. Then we have the English Civil War, and as soon as Cromwell done his best to put that and put it to bed and he become Lord Protector, he, he was granted the authority of a king. He refused to be king, but he was still granted the powers of the, the unification of England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales, and to preserve the law, to preserve righteousness. But it always comes under fire, it's always undermined by the opposing powers, evil powers who want to overthrow it and keep people down in bondage and ignorance to the truth and the significance of the history. And because people aren't Bible believers, they see religion as its divided, fallen state, they won't accept the gospel and simplicity of Jesus Christ. They won't come to the knowledge themselves. They willingly remain either in one camp or another camp or in all the divided camps that you're labelled in by the by the devil, by the proponents who speak his voice in thinking that they are a law unto themselves and every man goes his own way, every, every man thinks he's right in his own intellect but they're all against God, they're all against Jehovah, they're all against the word of God they're all against the law we're, we, we live in a reprobate nation, a crooked and perverse generation, as Paul, the Apostle Paul said. And, and all Christians are persecuted for the truth, for standing, to being placed on the rock and being a, a witness of the gospel, the true gospel. Even religion comes after Christians. Even the Protestants, even the Catholics are against, because it rocks their boat. It, 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 it takes their dummy out of their mouth, it takes their rattle out of their pram and they don't like it so they, they justify their cause over the cause of Christ, over the, the spreading of the gospel, the one heart, the one mind and one spirit of the gospel of Jesus Christ to share, share the gospel, to preach repentance and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and this is what's constantly under attack and this is what is in our history and prolific in our history from this Jesuit Illuminati and Freemasonic exploitation and that's why we had this gunpowder treasonous plot and it's either vainly remembered in Parliament they check the basement this is how prophetic and uh, lip service that our own Parliament today pays and hasn't heeded the warnings of history, hasn't feared God, hasn't believed. So history's repeating itself and it's getting in a worse spiral. It's spiralling out of control. You know, and I only pray for our nation and our and the people of this nation to start to come to the knowledge of history and the significance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Guy Fawkes Day what it was to commemorate. And it all ties into the preservation of the Holy Word and our lawful rights as a nation. So I invite people to examine history, to study these things, but to prioritise their salvation and to seek the merciful love of Jesus Christ, the reality, the simplicity that God is faithful, God is loving, God is long-suffering, not willing that any man should perish and is outstretched to save all sinners and you are a sinner I am a sinner I'm a wretched sinner and it's only by the grace of God that I have received mercy and redemption and that's the simplicity of the gospel from the beginning that's been attacked and when our nation became Christian our, our, our nation's attacked and now we're slave to the, the powers that be the machinations through the Illuminati Freemasonry 
the infiltration of Christianity, the infiltration of state religion and the overturning of it, the capturing of it, the compromising of it and the yoking it to this lump and the whore of Babylon, the mystery harlot, the wickedness of the Roman Catholic Vatican City and prophecy will be fulfilled, God is judged, God is just and he will judge this nation but the message of today is redemption and the forgiveness of sin for all mankind whether that's the Pope, whether that's the Illuminati, whether that's Satanist, whether that's the common everyday sinner on the street who's buried in the ignorance of history, who's buried in the in all, all the fights against it, all the political machinations, all the all the stirrings on a daily basis, all the support by the world media and Hollywood against the simplicity, the whole world's against Jesus Christ. And he's outstretched to any sinner who calls upon him with all their heart, fearing God, he will answer the the faithful believer of Jesus Christ and he will save them and that person, in, individual will have a change of heart and they will know that living God is faithful and his word is faithful. So I'm going to extend that invitation and um, give these thoughts on the writing today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.